I find that with business owners, CEOs, founders that I work with, guys doing six figures, seven figures, eight and even nine figures, some really well-known brands in Australia. And the biggest thing that I find is that if the founder hasn't done sales beforehand and they haven't been in the trenches and they haven't done that as a career, it's really difficult unless you can do that yourself as the founder before kind of offloading into a team. It's incredibly difficult to do so. And I see eight times out of 10 people failing doing it because mm. you, you can't see what it's actually like as a sales rep in the trenches doing the actual thing. Welcome back to another episode of the Ben and Berg's podcast. I'm Ben, your favorite high school dropout and founder of Collective Shift. Not alongside me today is Berg's, your favorite MBA and CEO of Collective Shift. Join us as we bring you world-class crypto research and strategies to help you dominate this crypto bull market, as well as behind the scenes view of us scaling a fully remote subscription research business here in Australia. If you like the podcast, we'd love for you to subscribe. Uh, we do this every single week, bringing you new exciting guests. And today we've got uh, a good mate of mine, Connor Healy, a fellow ex-Tasmanian that's now running a seven-figure sales coaching business. He flew in from Dubai last night. You've made some time for me, man. Thanks so much for coming. No worries, bro. Pleasure to be here. It's good to see you. How's Dubai, man? Man, it's unreal. We're talking about that as we're just grabbing coffee on the way here. It's, uh, it's a different world compared to Australia, for sure. <laughs> the rain for one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It did rain a couple of times while I was in Dubai, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a massive shift coming back to Australia, that's for sure. So talk to me, like you've come from, you and I, we grew up in Tassie. I remember like, what, two or three years ago, like we were sort of, we met each other, I think at um, online or Instagram, so I went out for, for lunch and I just saw it in you, man. You had this drive, you had this, you had the, the glimmer in the eye that like, I was like, fuck, this guy's like dialed in. A few years later, you're now doing six figures a month, you know, you've got, a shitload of these clients that you're working with sales wise you move to dubai like what's the what's the journey been like man like talk us through the transition in your life the last couple of years yeah it's been cre- pretty crazy man um obviously you know that i started in retail so i started working in bunnings uh and that was pretty much the only job that i did have i told my parents like i, I refused to work anywhere else i was super pretentious yeah uh and i just wouldn't have any job anywhere else ever. but got a job at bunnings and then I basically just started working with a mentor when I just finished high school. I had basically failed science in high school and barely passed maths. And for some reason, when I was a lot younger, I saw that my, my cousin was doing chemical engineering. And I thought that sounded like really, really smart. And I had like a six-figure salary and I was like, that sounds awesome. Like, let's do that. Uh, but I wasn't smart enough to do that. So I had to figure out the next best option. So I was scrolling uh, on Facebook one time and I saw basically what would be called like a guru uh, in Melbourne. And long story short, I ended up on a sales call with him uh, an hour later, paying him $7,500, giving some stranger on the internet all this massive what cash uh, to learn this skill of like sales, selling online basically which is really not heard about at all. Uh, High ticket sales, it sounds like a very foreign concept and absolutely is. Uh, Selling things for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars online for 10% commissions. So making a couple hundred dollars per sale to a thousand is uh, is pretty well unheard of. So yeah, that was where we kind of got the start. And now, long story short, if we kind of just skipped a few steps, um, I'm now basing my operations out of Dubai and yeah been loving it that's epic man so it, what about so uh, personal experience like you know i didn't come from a sales background either you know been doing this business now for nearly four years and i feel as though the last two years we really had a lack of sales focus and i think i went down the the, the rabbit hole of like okay the cash is king right any business to survive needs cash and you need to bring in people in the door and how do you do that you've got marketing and sales Right, marketing primarily is the brand, and then you got sales that converts. And that skill set I didn't really have, and it wasn't until I went deeper and deeper into sales that I sort of recognized I was like, "Oh shit, sales is one of the most, if not the most, valuable skill set you can have as a business owner or even as an individual." Like outside of being a business owner, for me, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Mm. If you're not a business owner, another like another skill set, or the 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 most valuable skill set outside of that to make a, a chunk of cash without having to go and be a doctor would probably be sales. Absolutely. Yeah. I think also from a business owner's dynamic as well, I find that with business owners, CEOs, founders that I work with, you know, I've worked with 
guys doing six figures, seven figures, eight and even nine figures, some really well-known brands in Australia. And the biggest thing that I find is that if the founder hasn't done sales beforehand and they haven't been in the trenches and they haven't done that as a career, it's really difficult unless you can do that yourself as the founder before kind of offloading it to a team. It's incredibly difficult to do so. And I see eight times out of 10 people failing doing it because mm. you, you can't see what it's actually like as a sales rep in the trenches doing the actual thing. And I must say, it's fucking hard. It is. <laughs> like, like, I think, you know, for, for me getting in the trenches and we do basically, you know, strategy calls, which we help our potential clients understand what we do and how we can help. And then ultimately, it's like, it, it's a sales call, right? We, we, we want to see how we can help them. Mm. And then- there's so many tactics though, isn't there? And I'm so keen to hear like from your perspective, like what are, like I know you, you know, actually let's talk about your program. Like how do you, how do you help your, your clients and who are other people that you actually help teach sales to? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, who I particularly help is basically just help recreating the transformation that I have myself, mm -hmm. which is about five years doing this now, particularly the industry that we sell in and I help guys transition into is what we call as high ticket sales. Not many people are part of it, especially a lot of Australians as well will go scammy, guru, pyramid scheme, like this type of stuff. But we hear about it. But typically, like you can think of anything that would help someone develop or accelerate certain areas of their life. So dating, fitness, making money, business, lead generation, that type of stuff. And I teach people to transition out of their current career, so the current nine to five or traditional sales rep selling traditional stuff to this industry because it's obviously higher paying commissions and uh, in some cases it's a lot easier to sell. But you are very right in terms of learning the full box of skills in sales itself. Mm. It's taken me a long time, thousands of hours of calls study listening to my own calls over and over and over again mm. yeah that's typically who we help and so many different angles all they go down because i feel as though the, the lessons that i've learned in sales it's a lot about the process and the journey you take someone from the start of the call to the end and, and how that flows and the momentum and the questions you ask but then also knowing the product as well and being able to deliver the product i think back to your point if i was to just and i'm pretty sure i came out to you it was like two years ago i was like look man i need a salesperson and you helped me with a bunch of the scripting and, and whatever else. But ultimately, I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah. You know, and, it, and I found that across all of my business experience that if you don't know how to do the thing, then you're not going to hire the right person because you don't know what skill sets they need. You don't know their KPIs. You don't know how, what success looks like. So, it wasn't until I went in the weeds and really dug in deep. And, I mean, I appreciate you because I remember... I think I sent you a couple of like, <laughs> like screen recording. Oh my God, what do I do? <laughs> I'm not converting anyone. And I yeah. sent you a bunch of stuff. And yeah, you, know, you, really, you really sort of laid it out around like, you know, how to actually build uh, you know, a call where you're ultimately helping the person by, you know, taking them on a journey and showing them what to do. What, what are the things that you see in the best sales reps that you work with, your clients? Like, what are their skill sets that you think are the best? I think... Having persistency and consistency because sales as a skill does not happen overnight, mm. but a lot of people expect that to happen. And at the end of the day, what I've learned from my past mentors, because I'm not going to claim to be the best salesperson in the world or the best sales trainer in the world at all. I've learned from, from some very great people. But what I understand sales is, is just being changed, right? You're taking from someone from where they are now to where they want to be and you're changing direction and it's very, very simple, but you're just pairing a solution to the person's problem. That's it. Mm -hmm. And when you learn sales at the most fundamental core, which I have, I feel very comfortable selling anything and everything that is a service and that someone is aware of the solution. That's it. Mm -hmm. As long as I understand the problems that you solve as a provider, whether or not it's more leads, this, that, and the other thing, I'm pretty comfortable selling it. But across the board from... The best reps, I think curiosity is a massive one because curiosity leads to the right questions. The right questions get the right answers and the best answers get the most sales, basically. Okay. I hear that. And one of the, what's an average salesperson in your client base making? Like if they go work at a high ticket closing um, role, what, mm -hmm. what could they be looking to make? Yeah, so the, the realistic time frame that I give 
majority, if not all my guys, is six months to a year. You can absolutely be looking at that 10 to 15K a month range. Uh, a lot of people online talk about it's 30, 60, 90 days, but where typically I've seen the sweet spot is about six months to a year. It's even better if you can do it for one to two years. Mm. Uh, that's typically where I see most of my guys hit some sweet spots. Like we've got a couple of people I'm interviewing in Sydney while I'm here in Australia. So Benji, who just hit his first 13K month, but it took him eight months to get there. Uh, we got Peter, his first 10K month. We have Richard, 10K a month, and he's like traveling the world, going to Thailand and stuff. And then the Saxon as well, who was originally a tradie, uh, sold his car to work with me, and now he's doing 10K a month. That's things awesome. in like four or five months, and like that. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. And I think, like, you know, knowing you, and I think the perception of it's probably similar to crypto, right? Yeah, it's 100%. like this, like, kind of scammy, slimy, kind of like, you know, industry where no one really, it's all the smokes and mirrors, right? A lot of yeah. people pretending that they're. Like with the Rolls Royce, we're on the PJs, like, you know, they're doing everything. But what I like about what what your content is and, and all the testimonials you post that I see from your clients, it's like, it's kind of what us, what we try and strive for. It's like, no bullshit. You tell her how it is. You're not know, like promising someone next week they're going to come in and just like make a bunch of cash. It's like, no, it's going to take you eight months, bro, and you need to yeah. work fucking hard. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Yeah. And I think a quote that my mentor gave to me a long time ago, which is, if you believe what you're selling can actually solve the problem for the person, it is in your ethical and moral obligation to sell it to them mm. right? and to become really good at doing so. Because like, let's say, for example, it's fitness. Let's say that the program that you're selling is three or 5K and the person's severely overweight. If you don't push that person to the limit where you are asking them to make a change so they can better change their life, they might be on their way to an early grave. They may have less quality of life. It doesn't just affect them. It affects everyone around them. And that goes for anything that you can sell. So it's like as long as it's something good that you're selling, you, it is in your ethical, moral, ethical and moral obligation to learn to get good so you can help people make the change they need to make. Mm. Interesting, man. So a lot of our listeners are either business owners already, so like some of the, the sales stuff they're probably starting to learn for the other folks that are maybe looking for an extra income or looking to maybe quit their job and start something fresh. Like what sort of tips or advice would you give those people to one? Like, cause I'm, you know, sales isn't for everyone. Like what, what, what is the things that they should be asking themselves to see if this is something that they want to get into? Don't do it all right away and just jump in. Like a lot of people do. I suggest going the other way and breaking your income down into four different levels. So I like to teach all my guys these different levels. So you've got survival income, you've got replacement income, you've got so you've got savings, and you've got your dream income. A lot of people end up making the rash decision and just kind of going all in. When if you don't have a basis for your your monthly expenses or whatever it is, it's typically not going to be the smartest move. Especially like in my industry, it's all commission only sales. So you eat what you kill. Very rarely do you have a salary. Mm. If you're doing appointment setting, you might have a salary just for the inconsistency there. But if you're in sales, like you want to be commissioner only. So I'd recommend if someone's ever looking to explore in that, starting their own business or like getting into something to like commissioner only sales, I would try and prepare at least a good little nest egg. So you have at least four, six months to really kind of make it work. Because I've been in spots where I didn't have much money and it was kind of puts a bit of a fire up your bum. Mm. Uh, like I've been in the point where when I tried to start my own market agency, which I did successfully, but I went all in with it. And I had like three months left to live, like mm. rent, yeah. staff costs, everything. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it's the smartest move. So I'd probably just say play a little bit conservatively, but also have the same set of mind of the true results you're looking for aren't going to happen until you go all in. Mm. And there's so many different directions that we can take that in. So mm. the, other, the other thing I think is like as a clarifying point, you know, for these high ticket remote businesses. <laughs> is it right? Yeah, just, yeah, just keep going. <laughs> we'll, keep right. that, we'll keep that in. Sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. We'll, keep that, we'll in. keep that in. That's all good. Um, <laughs> uh, we just had a drink spillage here on the pod uh, for those listening. But, um, you know, commission only sales. So, you know, is that the benefit of, I guess, being able to work remote anywhere in the world, 
the upside is the flexibility, mm-hmm. but also the downside being that it is only commission only. Yeah, and that's also the risk as well that a lot of people don't talk about because in my industry, things can be volatile as well, right? You can be working on an opportunity and then the next week it's not working for you. Mm-hmm. Like I've been in that position plenty of times where I've been working on opportunity and uh, things just go to shit, mm-hmm. basically. The marketing dies, the fulfillment breaks. Because the coaching industry is such a new world and it is almost like the wild, wild west where it's not like your business where it's more traditional mm. or the traditional businesses that most people are used to. There's so much that can go wrong uh, and there's a lot of room for error. Mm. So in my industry, yes, things can be volatile, but you can put effective strategies and measures in place to make sure that your income is somewhat safe and you have the ability to move and work through different businesses as long as you've got a pipeline of them. Can, can you just give us a quick, for those that have no idea about high ticket sales, like what are the kind of businesses that are, hiring these remote ticket uh, remote closers and also what are they selling and at what price points yeah so let's take a couple of examples of things i've sold in the past so one of them i sold for a year i was making about 10 to 12k a month fairly consistently for about a year so i was working with a good friend of mine zane and that primarily helped people start their own business as a digital marketing agency right someone who wanted to transition from their current career to start an agency that was like a paper lead model mm-hmm. where the client would only pay per result. Mm-hmm. Another thing that I sold in the past was like, and that was like four or five K at the time. Four or five K like for an annual subscription. I think it was for like a six months or a okay. year mentorship. And then business owner or want to be business owners. Got you. Yes. Yeah. And then how, like what sort of conversion rate would you be aiming for in a, in a role like that? Well, it's going to depend on who you speak to. There's so many different variations of how that can go. Mm. And without going into too nerdy sales knowledge, essentially the process that that business was running was a VSL, so which mm-hmm. is a video sales letter, from cold traffic mm-hmm. to what's called a triage call. Mm-hmm. So it's like a 15-minute call before mm-hmm. a sales call to, to filter through leads yeah. and qualify them. And then they would reach to me. Now, at that point... For business opportunity, which is that niche industry, it's probably going to be about you're doing really well if you're at like 70 to 80%. Like, wow, you're doing yeah. great there. Because that's basically cold traffic. Yeah. Yeah. That's insane. So, I was probably sitting around the 70% yeah. for a year. You're doing good if you're at like 60 and you're kind of a KPI if you're like, 40 to 50, I would probably say. And then say. how much, how many of the calls would be filtered out in the triage, do you think? It's a good question. On a triage, and again, for reference for the listeners, so a triage is basically a 10 to 15 minute call. It's a filtration qualifi- qualification call. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty much the main objective is that is just to look for, is the person able to be sold? Mm-hmm. So can we solve the problem they have? Mm-hmm. Get them to show up to the second call. And then thirdly, any qualifications based off the business. So time, finance, partner objections, yeah. pre-handling those the best that we can. I'm trying to figure out like, you know, how many calls, basically my idea of the question was how many calls would you expect to do in a week mm. in a role like that? Mm. If you're converting 80%, I mean, that's, that's awesome, right? Versus if you're just tackling all cold traffic coming away, yeah. there's going to be a bunch of shitty leads. Yeah, that's going to significantly go down. And that for me, like in the sales role, that's a killer. Like, that's a, oh my God, if I like jump on a call with multiple just like, People that just are there to take the piss. It's It'll like, piss you off. Oh my god, that's soul destroying, <laughs> man. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I think that's that's a very important part of it, uh, and it's also important where your leads come from. Mm. We've spoken about this in the past, like the evolution yeah. of the coaching business is the way that I see it, and most businesses in the future is. I think that YouTube's going to be the best platform for leads. Mm. That's what I've grown the back of my business up of on, and we do some serious numbers for having you know less than 1300 subscribers most people don't believe me when i tell them but i have to just actually show them the proof of what's going on like when i catch up with people in dubai and we're talking about uh where the business is at and where we're going and goals and things like that people just don't believe me mm-hmm. i just like i have to show them the, the actual merchant uh payment processing dashboard that i use because it's like uh it's pretty crazy. Let's talk about the business side because that's what I, I like the most. Yeah. <laughs> so you're doing seven figure revenue a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk to me about your business model, what pricing points, how many clients you have, 
ha- yeah, let's 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 start there. We'll go deeper. Yeah. So we're, I think, since starting of April last year. So we've practically been doing this for just about a year now. Mm-hmm. I think we have close to like 175 clients at the moment. Wow. And we originally started our launch at 1500 US. Mm-hmm. Is, had, that a, is that a year or a lifetime? Uh, that was, so we've just like not had a time limit on it for yeah. now. Yeah. Because uh, I just wanted to make sure that everybody in the community is getting results and they're yeah. crushing it and they're super happy. Yeah. Uh, so there has been no time limit on the mentorship for now. But essentially the whole business model we have is it's, basically a training company and a coaching and a mentorship and some leads might be watching this. So I won't, I won't talk about my price exactly. <laughs> uh, but we, we originally were at 3000 us and that's increased. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, primarily we just have one acquisition channel, one client avatar. So we like target nine to five as people were yep. transition out of their current role into sales mm-hmm. and particularly my industry. YouTube channels, our main acquisition source, I do all the sales calls. I do all the onboarding calls. It's a one ma- one man business, by the way. Like for full context. Uh, so, so have you got anybody on an assistant? Anything? No. So it's just me. Obviously, I have some contractors. I don't do the video editing and yeah. things like that. But I don't have any official team. It's primarily just being me up until now. I work a lot. Sometimes I don't work a lot. Um, you know, as you would know, as a founder, sometimes there are a long days, and sometimes there are days where you just do nothing, and then you feel like everything's going wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the whole business. One acquisition channel, very high profit margins. I think last month we were at like 91% profit. <laughs> it's like it's ridiculous. No, no advertising, uh, all organic. We've tried advertising a couple of times and we've probably signed like maybe one or two clients from it, Yeah, but hasn't really been successful. Yeah. But yeah, those numbers, no ads, no team, just me. That's awesome, man. Talk us about the organic because you and I feel as though we've gone back and forth a lot of like the, the tactics and like for both of us, I think ads at the moment is just a, it's a hard beast to crack. Very. Talk yeah. to you're saying that YouTube, you're basically that is the that's the that's the mothership at the moment. Like, mm-hmm. what's your strategy there? How much content are you creating? What are you creating content on? Talk us to that. So I think I'll start where the reason why I originally started doing the YouTube stuff. I'd made a couple purchasing decisions over the past couple of years where I started to kind of crack the code. I'm like, that is where the money is because I remember the f- first like massive investment that I made was 20,000 Australian in one of my mentors. His name is Jeremy Minor. When I did, when I bought it, I just rocked up with a credit card and just paid him full. But p- prior beforehand, I'd spent months watching his YouTube content, hours and hours and hours and hours. I'm like, okay, so there's something there. And I worked with another mentor where I paid him seventeen thousand Australian dollars. Same thing. Watched him months before on YouTube, built a relationship with him beforehand. He doesn't know who I am, but I do through his content. And you're basically like virtually building a relationship with somebody. Mm-hmm. Then there was another coach that was again seventeen, eighteen thousand Australian dollars, watched him for a couple of months, and then another guy I just spent twenty four thousand Australian dollars on for YouTube. Uh he's a big numbers too, like yeah. it's not small. So you're spending money on mentors to help you in certain things that you want to grow in, right? YouTube yeah. strategy, coaching, sales, whatever it might be. Yeah. And you made those pers- purchasing decisions off YouTube. Exactly. And you've just gone, holy fuck, what am I doing? Let's get you. <laughs> exactly right. And that was like, I was like, cool, there's something here. And I started to understand that because, so I mentioned working as a sales rep in a company can pay infinite dividends when you try to start your own thing. Mm-hmm. Because you understand the psychology, you've been in the trenches, especially how it collaborates with marketing. And so that was, I was like, cool, let me just create a bunch of YouTube content. And even though I wasn't getting it edited, I was just getting some very average thumbnails done. I just wanted to start doing it consistently. And I Almost up until like a couple of weeks ago, I've been posting three times a week for about like 10 months or something like that. Wow. So just pure consistency. And just making sure that I have content there to nurture people because mm. you never know who's watching, mm. like never, like no clue. Like people can have been like, even then I only get a couple hundred views. I joke about it. So I'm like, I get it. Do the numbers I'm doing with like just a couple hundred views per video, but they're the right views and they're the right people. Mm. And they come on calls. They're ready to buy. They know who I am. They know my story. They resonate with my values. They understand their expectations. They know exactly what they want. They've already decided they want to do high ticket sales. And I don't have to do anything. 
they can come onto my YouTube channel and spend weeks and months with me at a time watching hours of my content and people come on calls and they say all the time, the great super fans. Mm. Like, I can't believe I'm getting to speak to you. Like, I have 1,300 subscribers. I'm not that important. Yeah. But people are really excited because they spend this time with you. And I like to, I've experienced that as well, investing in my current mentors and how big of a difference that's made mm. across the board. So, you've taken this approach of let's not create this like high production, entertaining, wisey woozy content. Let's just get to the beans. Let's just talk like direct value. And that is nurturing the right type of your avatar like more thoroughly. So, when you get on the call, they're already, they're basically ready to go nearly. Exactly right. And I've never experienced anything like it. Wow. It literally felt like I had just created by it. Because I remember when I was, I was in Vietnam with a, with a good friend of mine now, Jordan. And I remember when I just had started posting on YouTube. I think it was August last year. That was the first time we hit 100K revenue in a month. It's not cash collected. For people that don't know, coaching space has this weird difference between contracted and cash collected. So it was just revenue. I can't remember what the cash was, but it was it was insane. I'd run out to the kitchen every morning. I'd be like, Jordan, are you just like you are you seeing this? Two, three, four people booking a day for that whole month of August. Wow. And it was just like raining money because I knew that I could sell. And I knew that these leads were good. You said the ones are on the call that's done and dusted. And so I was just like, cool, like I'm getting these calls booking every single day. I'm like, every day I was making a sale here or there. I think wow. I made like twenty three 24 sales a month or something like yeah. that i put in a few shanti payment plans i probably shouldn't have <laughs> but probably like 21 of them were like really good clients wow so yeah youtube is is crazy and so you, you were doing a bit on instagram as well i think you still do that like the difference between the two are you using instagram to grow like top of the funnel into the youtube or how are you sort of playing that instagram is a really good conversion platform uh because you can have conversations with per- people who are interested in, in buying what you offer uh, you can nurture them, you can send voice messages and you can have all that short-term stuff. Like I have different highlights, my story of like all my client results, mm. my story, everything that I wouldn't naturally put in a YouTube video. Oh, so you're going YouTube to Instagram. Yeah. So mm. a lot of people come from YouTube to Instagram and have conversations with me before booking a call. Nice. Uh, and so, yeah, Instagram works really, really well, especially with highlights in my stories. Like I mentioned, just optimizing for showcasing client results, my story, uh, and a couple other things. It's a way to constantly be in front of the people that you want to work with eyes, basically, because mm-hmm. you're posting stories every single day. You're documenting the story. Obviously, for what I sell as well, like people like to see the lifestyle stuff. Mm. I don't like to be too cringy with it, like <laughs> to the point where you're over in Dubai just getting in like rented Lambos and this yeah. stuff. That's not what I like to do. But like there needs to be some element of degree of it of me traveling and just showcasing what I'm doing, I guess. Yeah, because is that because because your client avatar ultimately probably is looking up to that too, right? They want to live that sort of similar lifestyle. Yeah, <clears throat> although that's not really the reality of it. Mm. It's yeah, at least the good stuff. Right? Yeah, you only do the good stuff. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it it looks like it's always amazing, but for the vast majority of the time, it's just. Sitting there, working, you know, 12-hour days, 14-hour days, just doing the stuff that matters. But you don't really see that on Instagram nowadays. So let's talk about that because I feel as though we've been on a similar journey as the nomad life. I spent six weeks in Dubai. You've, like, recently moved there. Mm. It's glamorous on the outside and then you get there and you're literally just in your, like, in your apartment, like, just grinding all day. <laughs> At the end of the day, you look around, you've got no one there, you're lonely. If you don't know anyone you're in this new country. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, because I remember, because I was really excited because I spent so much money. I spent the most amount of money I've ever spent on a pot, like an Airbnb for a month there. And I'm like flashing my story like, oh, look at this new YouTube setup, blah, blah, blah. And in the next 40 days, I'm just sitting there just like on my laptop. That's all that I do every single day. And like force myself to get outside and stop being like a little laptop goblin and yeah. just, just sitting there just doing work all day because that is the reality of what, is going to make the stuff work. It's Mm. not going to be traveling and doing this type of thing. While that is very fun, uh, what's going to drive the business forward is actually doing the boring work. Yeah, 100%. Let's talk about the the life that you've got at the moment, man. Like, Mm. you know, you're you're in your your 20s like me. You're a young dude, you know, similar to to my story. You come from Tassie, come from not much. Now you're crushing it. You've got this money, you've got this lifestyle. You can basically do whatever you want. 
we were speaking briefly, I think, on Instagram recently about like this transition phase of like, you know, for me anyway, like the first two or three years of this business was driven by fear and like I needed to go and like we're running out of money and holy shit, it's all going to die unless I fucking keep working. Mm. And then you sort of get to this tipping point of like, oh, okay, that's no longer, I'm not driven by fear anymore. Yeah. There's money in the bank. I can kind of now do, you know, within, within like reason, whatever I want. Mm what's the next step and you go through this sort of like weird nearly like i don't know it's like this come to jesus moment it's like what what do we do you go through this like what's life about what are we trying to do here and like yeah talk just talk me about that like you've been through something similar recently i think absolutely yeah we were talking over dms over this when i was on for a walk uh, out for a walk in dubai marina and yeah it kind of freaks you out for a bit because i've had these different thresholds of income that i've aimed for over the years and I keep on hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. And each level that I've hit, um, all the way from 5K a month to, to wanting to leave my job, like the original goal that I had had at the core of it was just to have freedom. When I was 18, I was like, cool, I just want to quit my job. I want to move to the Gold Coast and I want to have the flexibility and freedom to go where I want with whoever I want. And very quickly, I got that. And then I very much realized I was becoming close to building a business that didn't optimize for that in my space it's very very common like i have a lot of success people way more successful than me ever especially over dubai who are like you should push these crazy numbers and go to 100 200 300 400 500 million a month like you could do it bro i'm like yeah i probably could but i don't want to for now Mm -hmm. uh because i've created a business that's allowed me to have the lifestyle that i want i think people especially in my space try to push the numbers as a narrative that's being pushed on them just because they want to do it for ego because mm-hmm. it gets to a point where a business can start to really have diminishing returns and start destroying your life rather than adding benefit to it. And for me, I've, I've hit my financial goals. I know I'm going to get exactly where I want to go. I'm more optimizing for impact and purpose yeah. i get more excited than x amount learning in the bank account then i get more excited about student results rather than that yeah. like when someone tells me that they've quit their job um like we had richard for example who came to me in debt three part-time jobs he's quit them all he's cleared his debt he's made a pretty good bag in crypto as well recently <laughs> with all these meme coins as well he's crushing it and yeah, he's just quit his, and he's like, just messages like that. I got a message from a student as well yesterday while I was on the plane. Like, you changed my life, bro, in less than a year. That's like, awesome. that's what excites me. Yeah. And like doing these case studies in Sydney and in-person interviews, like that's kind of what lights me up because I'm compressing what took me five years to basically get guys to do it in mm-hmm. six months to a year. And so I think past the financial income and threshold, past a certain limit, it doesn't really change anything. And it's not a good motivator either, I find. No. It's, it's, it's motivating to a point to where you need to get to to survive and live and then have the money to do the thing. But then, and, you know, for me now, like, you know, I had my target, we sort of crushed that. And now it's like, you know, the things that I would visualize in the past would be, I need to get to this amount of money. And now it's like, well, we're there. And it's not about that anymore. That's not exciting. What is it? It's about the impact, the success of other people and like how you can you know, do it with the people that around you that you love and you can take care of those people. Like that's what's more impactful and motivating. Mm. I'd be interested to hear, how is it building a business on your own? Like completely, like do you, do you find it gets lonely sometimes? Like no one to share those experiences with? Of course, for sure. Uh, that journey is very lonely, mm. for sure. Uh, and no one gets it too, right? I bet like some of yeah. you, know, you guys from like high school mates. Poor, just, poor you, man. <laughs> no, yeah. 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 Shit, man. You're, you're like- on this money, that sounds horrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's... It is incredibly isolating uh, because before I even started my own business, and as you would know for yourself, coming from Tasmania, like such a small place, like uh, nobody gets it. Mm. And for years, it was just me doing my own thing, making sacrifices, working extremely hard, not knowing if it was ever going to pay off, by the way. Like it took me a long time to see any, some semblance of success, Mm. Uh, like I went my first year baking, uh, making like almost zero dollars. Like it was very difficult. Mm. That, that journey alone in combination with running your own business is incredibly 
isolating. Mm. And I spoke to a good friend of mine the other day who's really, really successful, a 21-year-old in Australia. As you become more successful, you need to find people who are at that level because the conversations you have are very much different to someone who's just running a normal nine to five. Mm. There are different individual problems. You can't talk about the same things. Otherwise, you'd be viewed as, you know, up yourself, mm. I guess, to the, the general person. But it's it's generally meeting people at that same level as you is, is really important because, yeah, like I mentioned, the more successful I become, the more lonely it gets mm. because as well, people will say, well, you know, that doesn't sound like a bad problem to have. Like, <laughs> how, like, what do you think? Like, these guys are making this amount of money, money blah, blah, blah. Your problems are kind of just dampened down because you are now what is seen as successful yeah, yeah. and nobody really cares yeah i find that too like the people that you surround yourself with is who you become who you look up to yeah that's why i lo- like that was one thing about in dubai that i love because you were such a small fish you yeah. know you look around you're like well, i'm nobody here exactly you right. know like yeah um you know it's very capitalistic it's very entrepreneurial you know it attracts a lot of money a lot of talent yeah and being around that and, and that's something that i've tried to focus on more recently being back in melbourne like finding uh you know more people that i can surround myself with that are above me to go fuck like okay that like that's the that's what inspires me yeah doing more dinners with with d- dudes doing you know 500k a million a month whatever it might be you, t- you hear their problems what they're going through it's like wow like that's inspiring you know yeah i mean for example with the guys listening like within my first or second week of getting them because i felt like i was starting to become somewhat successful especially in australia uh but like you just mentioned Got in Dubai. I went out, when I set up my business originally in October, I didn't really like it. I was pretty uncomfortable because when I got there, I just felt very intimidated mm. because people have number plates there with one or two letters on them and they're like worth more than like <laughs> someone's dream house, like a million dollar number plates, things like that. Yeah. And every like even just someone in the elevator you could see in an Airbnb is staying and could be wearing like a half a million dollar watch or whatever it is. So it's very intimidating and you are much a smaller fish, but it's very inspiring and it raises you to a higher level of achievement because I earn the most amount of money I've ever made in February and March while I was over there. And so I don't think there is any mistake to that. Mm. Like I got invited to a coffee with a couple guys, you know, one of them who's done $30 million online, one of them who sold his business for multi-million dollars and has done like 18 million dollars online the other guy is doing like seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month and i'm just kind of sitting there like this little guppy this this small fish but like there was no ego to that at all none of these guys act different none of these guys are different to me or you or anybody really at all they all have the same problems as everybody else does Mm. and so i think yeah being in that environment in dubai was insane i'm really excited to, to have my base of operations there that's pretty sick man what are the bit, like the biggest takeaways from surrounding yourself with those people that are at those levels like what what sets them apart to others like what are the things that they're doing that that, that others are not i think a couple things i think number one is time because nowadays everybody wants things now 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 nobody wants to wait for things and to get to where i am which I'm still only very young, but to get to where I am, it's been nothing but work from 18 to 23. Mm -hmm. That's it. Just head down, ass up, sacrifice everything. When everybody's going out and doing this and doing that, that most people do my age, didn't do that. I did it sometimes, occasionally here and there, but like not at all compared to what some of my age would would typically do. So I've had to just sit at home, be boring, as I like to call it, or like I'd like to change it to being focused. This is the way I like to say it now uh, instead of something negative. But yeah, just being focused for years and years and years on the one thing was time was a big mm-hmm. thing. Because I looked at all these guys at the table I was sitting at and they're all in their late 30s, majority of them, or mid 30s. And I'm like, I realized, okay, I'm only 23. I've still got a long time to go. Um, I think the other things would be, obviously they, they all work extremely hard. They're at a point where all their businesses have a good amount of leverage uh, and they've got team and things like that. So that's definitely a big thing that I learned. But the final thing that I think it's so important is they all have an accumulation of skills. So really, really good skills all across the board that all make money, client success systems, marketing, sales, team operations, finance. 
these are the skills I'm optimizing for over the next couple of years because the business that I've created is not really a business. Mm-hmm. I like to talk, I talked to a multimillionaire mentor of mine uh, recently. I'm well aware that it is literally an ATM. It's not a real business. You can't sell it. It's all attached to your personal brand. Yeah. Uh, so it's just a constant cash flowing thing. But where I think the real money is of what I've observed is learning that accumulation of skills and then taking it from our world, the coaching world, to a traditional world mm-hmm. and converting those skills into real world businesses that a class is boring, but <laughs> the majority of businesses aren't the level of sophistication that the coaching industry is in yeah. when it comes to sales, when it comes to marketing, when it comes to fulfillment. Mm-hmm. In our industry, it's like get 20 book calls the next week. Like th- these are types of offers that you make. Whereas like if you do that with a traditional boring business, you can two or three X the business really quickly mm-hmm. as long as you know the good marketing and sales systems. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like that broader skill set to grow. And I think that consistency is a big thing. You're not getting distracted by the thing. For sure. Like, like that's like my biggest takeaway. If I look back at the last three or four years and look at all the little projects we start on the side to try and grow it faster, all failed. Mm. But the thing that we're really good at, the subscription business, doing a good job at the thing and keep growing and just pounding that day after day after day, that's the thing that grows. And not getting distracted, I think, is the... Because I think so many people just like... They, they jump too too much. They do something yeah. for six months. Like, oh, they get bored of it. And they're just probably just around the corner from actually getting wins, but they're too impatient. And I'm very impatient. Like, <laughs> just the most impatient bloke ever meet. But I think, like, that's where, for whatever reason, just being stuck and just so, like, just so aggressive at doing the thing and making that better over time, that's the thing that compounds. And usually, mm. I mean, you've done it in a year. I mean, it took us three years to really get the hockey stick. Yeah. Um, but once you get there, it's exciting. But the thing is, looking at the years previously is right. what's attributed to that hockey stick growth. It's like four years full-time in sales just doing that and thousands of hours of study at it yeah. and just getting really good at the one thing. And even from like 16 to 18, I had that same problem where I did a market agency, flopped. I did an e-commerce business, flopped. Mm-hmm. I tried to get into crypto, flopped. I tried affiliate marketing, it flopped. I tried Amazon FBA, it flopped. So it's like no one sees all that. No, they don't. No, they don't. Like it's it's the years of suffering until I think it's the the law of accumulation, uh, which is a really big thing to focus on. Uh, financial success or success with anything is the accumulation of hundreds and thousands and tens and thousands of small little actions mm. over time that nobody ever sees or appreciates. Hundred percent. It's the sending the emails, it's the study, it's the sitting at home, it's all the sacrifices that accumulate at once. But everybody likes to look at the, I talk about this in my YouTube videos quite often, everybody like, likes to look at the success now, but like not the years of just long-term delay gratification. Dude, I totally get that. And it's never just the one thing. I think like in the past, I've gone, if we can just raise this money, if we just get this investor on board, if we just get that client, if we just launch this product, it's never that. It's the consistent 1% day after day after day after day that compounds and grows. It's never the one thing. Yeah, it's always the accumulation of the small actions, the small activities. But the reason why that's so difficult to predict and continue and persist with is because it is that long-term duration thinking. Like I know we're at exactly where we want to be at with the business and it's really exciting to what that's going to look like over the next six months to a year because I know how things compound and go really quickly especially looking from when we started it back in April last year when I was like, I don't think anybody's going to want to listen to me. I don't think anyone's going to want to learn from me. I don't think this will work at all to now where it is at now. Uh, it's, it's powerful. It's exciting, man. So what are you going to do with the cash, man? Are you investing in crypto? We spoke about crypto. Yes, <laughs> yes. We are definitely investing in crypto at the moment. <laughs> yeah. um, I put 50K. Actually, no, I put like... 60 or 70k in when you put 50 in yeah, nice in, in ETH yeah in yeah ETH. nice yeah yeah because I had a couple of friends uh, that recommended to me that they're like yeah this is I saw a couple of my friends are really successful I uh, say yeah like it's it's really good right now so yeah it took me about six to eight hours to put all that in <laughs> um, but it was really good because everything was set up in Dubai infinitely easier yeah, like i could, I could put 22 23k in one transaction yeah and not really have an issue yeah which was really really good and i could use binance and just decent exchanges to, to get that done pretty smoothly so that's all sorted out dabbling in a bit of meme coins here and there nice. uh, but more of 
as a good friend of mine puts it, the the passive meme coin investor, yeah. rather than the active looking at the deck screen charts yeah. and looking at meme coins all day. Just pick a good ones that you can build some bit of a decent thesis around and yeah. then just so have a plan for it and a strategy let and run. just wait. Yeah, that was awesome, Basically, man. that's Brilliant. the plan. Awesome, man. Uh, any final tips or things that you'd just recommend to anyone that's looking to maybe to leave what they're doing now that want to get started in sales? Like what's the... What's the sort of advice that you give to someone? I think if it was if it was one main thing besides sales, leave your hometown. Mm. Go somewhere else because you're always going to be limited by what the people that you've grown up think of you uh, and know of you. The same com- thoughts, comfortable, comfortable, comfortable yeah. thoughts, uh, actions, and behaviors. Like it's always going to be the same if you stay in the same environment. So I would strongly suggest. If you're looking to do something different and you're looking to create a better life for yourself, move towns, uh, that was massively transformational when I went from Tasmania to Gold Coast and mm-hmm. Gold Coast to Brisbane and obviously Brisbane to Dubai and, and Bali and these other places. And then if someone's looking to start their own business, get in sales, do that type of stuff, I think the biggest thing comes back to the point that we, that we spoke about earlier, which is consistency and long-term delay of gratification, doing the same thing over and over and over again till you get completely sick of it. <laughs> like it yeah. should be, you should be willing and okay to not get the results that you need for six months, a year, two, three yeah. years. As long as you go all in, I've never seen somebody fail doing it. Make sure that you make the right precautions and obviously it's not necessarily going all in if you have a plan B, but I would say that's truly where the magic happens. Yeah. At least it has for me. Brilliant, man. That's awesome, dude. How can people find you, where you are online? And if people want to get started with sales, show your stuff. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. So obviously my YouTube channel is just uh, Connor Healy. So C-O-N-O-R-H-E-A-L-E-Y. We'll pop it in the bio description. And our Instagram is just Connor Healy underscore. And you can, you can find me there or we can chat. Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much for coming on, man. I know you're a busy dude and off to the Gold Coast uh, this week. So find around but thanks so much for finding the time man and yeah hopefully uh, a lot of the listeners enjoyed this of course bro thanks for having me thanks so much guys for listening if you liked the episode we'd love for you to share it with a friend family member uh anyone that you think will find this valuable it's how we grow the podcast make sure to leave us a little review if you liked it as well and we'll see you on the next episode